Welcome, I would like to welcome you to the second season of the Origins of Azeroth podcast. In this series, we will delve into the beginnings of the world, its shape, gods, titans, and many powerful entities. I am very happy that you are listening, and I hope you will enjoy the upcoming series, and learn something new and fascinating. For countless ages, the Pantheon persisted in their cosmic search for nascent titans, bringing order to countless worlds in the process. Despite their efforts, they did not encounter any more of their kin. At times, the titans of the Pantheon wondered if their quest was in vain, but they remained determined to press on. Deep within their hearts, they held on to the hope that more world souls existed, and this sense of purpose fueled their journey. Unbeknownst to the Pantheon, their intuition was correct. In a distant and isolated corner of the Great Dark, a miraculous new world was taking shape. Deep within this world's core, the spirit of a mighty and noble titan began to stir to life. As the nascent titan developed, elemental spirits roamed across the world's surface. As the ages passed, these beings grew increasingly erratic and destructive. The burgeoning world soul was so vast that it had drawn in and consumed much of the fifth element. Without this primordial force to maintain balance, Azeroth's elemental spirits descended into chaos. Fire, earth, air, and water, these were the forces that held dominion over the infant world. They reveled in unending strife, causing Azeroth's face to be in constant elemental flux. For elemental lords, mighty beyond mortal comprehension, ruled over countless lesser spirits. Of the elemental lords, none could match the ruthless cunning of Alakir the Wind Lord. He often sent his elusive Tempest minions to spy on his enemies and sow distrust among their ranks. Using feints and ruses, he would pit the other elementals against each other, only later to unleash the full fury of his servants on his weakened foes. The winds would howl and the skies would darken with storms at his approach. As lightning blasted the world's surface, Alakir's whirlwind elementals would come screaming from the heavens, enveloping his foes in monstrous cyclones. Ragnaros the Fire Lord detested Alakir's cowardly tactics. Impulsive and brash, the Fire Lord relied on brute force to annihilate his enemies. Wherever he went, volcanoes burst through the world's crust spewing forth rivers of fire and destruction. Ragnaros desired nothing more than to boil the seas, reduce mountains to slack, and choke the skies with ember and ash. The other elemental lords harbored deep resentment towards Ragnaros for his audacious and devastating assaults. Therizane the Stone Mother was the most reclusive elemental ruler. Ever protective of her children, she raised towering mountain ranges to ward off her enemies' assaults. Only after they had worn themselves, then against her impenetrable fortifications would the Stone Mother emerge, wrenching open giant chasms in the earth, and swallowing entire elemental armies whole. Those who survived would meet oblivion at the fists of Therizane's most powerful servants, walking mountains of unforgiving crystal and stone. The wise Neptulon the Tide Hunter remained cautious, not falling for Alakir's schemes or committing his minions to futile attacks against Therizane's citadels. As the armies of fire, air, and earth clashed across Azeroth, the Tide Hunter and his elementals skillfully divided and conquered their rivals. When his foes fled, Neptulon would crush them beneath tidal waves that dwarfed even Therizane's highest mountain holdings. The apocalyptic battles between the elemental lords raged for untold millennia. Dominance over Azeroth constantly shifted between the factions, each one striving to reshape the world according to its own image. However, for the elementals, victory took a back seat to the exhilarating conflict itself. 
To them, the world's calamitous state was sublime, and their sole desire was to perpetuate their endless cycle of chaos. Amid the chaotic primordial existence, the elemental lords reveled until a group of old gods descended from the great dark. They crashed into the surface of Azeroth, embedding themselves in various locations across the world. These towering old gods, possessed grotesque forms, marked with numerous gnashing maws and emotionless black eyes. An overwhelming sense of despair, enveloped everything under their writhing shadows. Like gargantuan, cancerous pustules, the old gods spread their corruptive influence across the landscape. The lands around them seethed and withered, turning black and lifeless for leagues upon leagues. All the while, the tendrils of the old gods warmed into the world's crust, slithering deeper and deeper toward the defenseless heart of Azeroth. Organic matter seeped from the old gods' blighted forms, giving rise to two distinct races. The first were the cunning and intelligent Enraki, also known as the Faceless Ones. The second were the Akir, insectoids of incredible resilience and strength. As the physical manifestations of the old gods will, both of these races would serve their masters with fanatical loyalty. Through their new servants, the old gods expanded their dominions in remote regions. The Enraki acted as merciless taskmasters, utilizing the Akira's as laborers to construct towering citadels and temple cities around their colossal masters. The mightiest of these bastions was built around Ashar, the most powerful and wicked of the old gods. This emerging civilization, situated near the center of Azeroth's largest continent, would eventually become known as the Black Empire. The rise of the Black Empire did not go unnoticed by the Elementals. Seeing the old gods as a challenge to their dominion, the Elemental Lords united to expel the entities from their world. For the first time in Azeroth's history, the world's native spirits worked together against a common enemy. Alakir's tempests merged with Ragnaros's fiery servants, creating monstrous cyclones of flame that engulfed the Black Empire's citadels in ash. Elsewhere, Therizane erected jagged rock walls to corral her enemies and shatter their temple cities. Neptulon and his tidal minions then swept in, crushing the Enraki and the Akir between unyielding stone and the fury of the seas. Despite their fervent efforts, the Elementals could not overthrow the Black Empire. Countless Enraki and Akir spawned from the Old God's repulsive forms, overwhelming the Elementals. The Enraki and Akir spread like an unstoppable pestilence, breaking the Elementals' forms. Ultimately, the Old Gods enslaved the Elementals and their lords. With the native spirits subdued, the Black Empire's borders expanded, enveloping much of the desolate world. A perpetual twilight descended upon Azeroth, plunging the world into a dark abyss of suffering and death. In the vast expanse of the great dark beyond, Akramar persisted in his mission to eradicate demonic influence from world to world. Though Akramar bore the full weight of this task alone, his resolve never wavered. He believed with all his heart that Sargeras would one day return and see that the Pantheon's cause was right. During his solitary journeys, Akramar sensed something extraordinary. A slumbering world soul's peaceful dreams resonating across the cosmos. This ethereal song led him to an undiscovered world, later named Azeroth. Nestled within the world's core, was one of Akramar's kin one far more powerful than any encountered. The spirit was so mighty that Akramar sensed its dreams even through the din of activity that rattled across the world's surface. As Akramar drew closer to Azeroth and beheld the world, horror seized him. Void energies shrouded the world's surface, like a layer of diseased flesh. 
From the ruined landscape rose the old gods and their black empire. Miraculously, the nascent titan's spirit remained uncorrupted, but Agrimar knew it was only a matter of time before it succumbed to the void. Seeking guidance from the pantheon, Agrimar shared his discovery, providing undeniable proof of Sargeras's warning about the Void Lords. Urgently, he implored the other Titans to take action, before Azeroth's fate was sealed forever. Ianar rallied behind Agrimar, emphasizing the potential of the new Titan. If nurtured to maturity, it could surpass even Sargeras's might and become a formidable force against the Void Lords. Beyond that, Azeroth was a lost member of their own family, vulnerable and in need of rescue. The Pantheon could not forsake their kin to the clutches of the Void Lords. Yenar's words resonated with the rest of the Pantheon, leading them to unanimously agree to save Azeroth, regardless of the cost. Akramar devised a daring strategy for saving this world soul. The Pantheon members would journey to Azeroth and confront the Black Empire that had ensnared it. However, their colossal forms risked damaging or killing the world soul, so Agrimar suggested creating powerful constructs to act as their hands in the battle. Under the guidance of the great forger Kosgaroth, the Pantheon crafted an army of enormous servants from the crust of Azeroth itself the Asir and the Vanir. The Asir were fashioned from metal, and they would command the powers of storms. The Vanir were formed from stone, and they would hold sway over the earth. Collectively, these mighty creatures would be known as the Titan Forged. The Pantheon imbued some of their servants with their own likenesses and abilities to lead the Titan Forged. These empowered beings became known as the Keepers. Though they would develop their own personalities, they forever bore the mark and abilities of their creators. Amonthal gifted some of his vast abilities to High Keeper Ra and Keeper Odin. Koskaroth bestowed his mastery over the earth and forging to Keeper Arcadus. Golgoneth granted Keepers the Rim and Hoder dominion over the storms and skies. Ianar gave Keeper Freya command over Azeroth's flora and fauna. Norganon lent a portion of his intellect and mastery of magic to Keepers Lokin and Mimiron. Lastly, Agrimar imparted his strength and courage to Keeper Tyr, who would become the greatest warrior of the Titan Forged. With this army fashioned from Azeroth's very crust, the Pantheon embarked on war, determined to shatter the Black Empire and free Azeroth from its malevolent grasp. The time to liberate Azeroth had come. Led by the Keepers, the Titan Forged launched a fierce assault on the Black Empire's northernmost holdings. The might and resilience of the Pantheon's armies made them an unstoppable force, unleashing divine fury upon their foes, decimating legions of Enraki and Akir, and toppling their temples. The arrival of the Titan Forged caught the old gods completely off guard. They reeled in response to these stone and metal-skinned invaders, but they were determined not to lose control over Azeroth. To reassert their dominance, the old gods called upon their greatest lieutenants, the Elemental Lords. Faced with an onslaught from the enraged Elemental Lords and their minions, the Keepers wisely decided to divide their forces and conquer their enemies separately. Each group of Titan Forged was dispatched to confront a specific Elemental Lord. Tyr and Odin volunteered to confront Ragnaros the Fire Lord the most destructive elemental lieutenant. Their battle raged for weeks, engulfing the land in fire and magma. The Keeper's resilient metal forms kept them safe from Ragnaros's fiery onslaughts. Tyr and Odin pushed Ragnaros back into his volcanic lair in the east. In a land of boiling acid seas and skies, choked with ash, the two Keepers defeated the Fire Lord. 
Meanwhile, Arcadus and Freya unleashed their powers upon Therizane the Stone Mother. To protect herself and her minions, the elemental ruler retreated into the towering stone spire that she called home. Arcadus used his dominion over the earth to weaken the citadel's foundations and shatter the craggy giants who guarded it. Freya then made colossal roots sprout from the ground to entangle the fortress. They wormed through stone and crystal, buckled the citadel's walls, and brought them down on Therizane's head. Ra, the Rim, and Hodor waged war with Alakir the Windlord. Using their mastery over the skies and storms, they forced the elemental lord back to his lair, among the highest peaks of Azeroth. Lightning set the heavens aflame, as Alakir struggled to hold off his foes. In the end, the three keepers turned the elemental lord's own power against him, defeating Alakir atop his lofty domain. Neptulon the Tide Hunter and his minions rushed to aid the other embattled elemental lords, but they were waylaid by Logan and Mimiron. The two keepers used their wits to harry and outmaneuver Neptulon's forces at every turn. Ultimately, Logan unleashed his arcane powers to freeze and shatter the water elemental's forms, while Mimiron crafted enchanted bonds to imprison Neptulon himself. Although the elemental lords had been defeated, the keepers knew that they could not utterly destroy the beings. The spirits of the elementals were bound to Azeroth itself. If they were killed, their corporeal forms would simply manifest again in time. Ra soon found a solution. He set out to imprison the elementals, much as the great Sargeras had done to demons. Ra first called on the aid of the gifted titan-forged sorceress Hela. They worked in concert to craft four interlinked domains within a pocket dimension known as the Elemental Plane. Ra and Hela then banished the Elemental Lords and nearly all of their servants to this enchanted prison realm. Ragnaros and the Fire Elementals were exiled to a smoldering corner of the Elemental Plane, known as the Firelands. Therizane and the Earth Elementals were locked within the crystalline caverns of Deep Home. Alakir and the Air Elementals were imprisoned among the cloudy spires of the Skywall. Lastly, Neptulon and the Water Elementals were sucked into the fathomless depths of the Abyssal Maw. Only a few Elementals would remain on the surface of Azeroth. With their leaders gone, these beings scattered and abandoned the war. Having contained the Elementals, the Keepers turned their attention to the Black Empire's Akiri legions. Many of the insectoids dwelled in vast catacombs that snaked beneath the surface of the devastated world. Arcadas bent the stones and soil to his will, collapsing the Akiri burrows and driving the creatures above ground. Upon emerging from their lairs, the insectoids found themselves surrounded by the Titan Forged. The battles between the Titan Forged and the Akir proved unexpectedly vicious. In time, the Keepers destroyed most of the Akiri race. Small pockets of the insectoids, those that had tunneled deep underground, escaped the Keeper's wrath. They were too weakened to mount a counterattack. Thank you for listening to this episode until now. I genuinely appreciate your time and interest. Your feedback in the form of comments, likes, dislikes, and shares is invaluable as it helps me create better and more exciting content for every member of this channel. As we continue our journey through the wonders of Azeroth together, I hope you'll join me for the next episode. To stay up to date and not miss out, consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the notification bell. Until then, take care, and may your adventures be filled with excitement and curiosity.